just like the rest of the Microsoft Office suite, Access provides you with a large number of wizards. Now these wizards are going to allow you to create a database very, very quickly. Now the chances of that database actually matching your needs exactly are quite remote, but as a quick start point, they are excellent to get you up and running. You can then come back, make changes and customize that content to the tables, the queries, the reports, so that it works exactly for you. So how do we get hold of one of these access databases? Well, we simply start access, go to file and new, and you'll be presented directly with the online templates. Now those online templates are given to you as a small example to start with. So for example, we have desktop issue tracking, desktop project management, desktop task management. Any of the databases that are prefixed with the word desktop are databases that will be stored on your file system. So either on your machine or your network. If they are not prefixed with the word desktop, such as the project management and the task management, then they are databases that must be stored as custom web apps, so held in the cloud at some location. For the moment, we're going to stick with desktop databases. Now I could go with one of the suggested choices here, or I could filter the choices by suggested searches. So for example, if I'm looking for an employee database, I would choose employee from their suggestions and a search would be made online. So we have desktop expense reports, desktop call tracker, desktop time card, desktop Northwind, task management, which is not a desktop, inventory, marketing, sales pipeline. Or we could put our own search term in. I may be looking to try and create a sales database, for example. So I type the word sales, return, and a search is again made of thousands of online templates. And here we have sales pipeline, desktop time and billing, desktop demo, desktop price comparison. So lots of potential choices to get me started. Or for the categories down the right, we have business, sales, industry, profit and loss, annual, gray, blue, analysis, retail, and that order. That could be appropriate for my needs. Desktop product inventory. I quite like the sound of this one. So once you finally, and it could take a while, find a database that looks like it meets your need, you choose it. It will then be downloaded. Could not be instantiated. This file may be corrupt. Excellent. So we try again, file new, sales, desktop sales pipeline. This time we've chosen one that does appear to be a template. And what I'm asked to do is give the file a name. So it will want to save in my document area, so guys document area. That's fine as an example. And I need to give it a sensible name other than database two. I'm going to call it sales example. We can read a little bit about this particular template and we can see the current score is four out of five stars from 1,570 votes. That's not too bad a score really. And then I click create and the database is created on my machine using the template that I've just chosen. So depending on the size of that template and what's involved, we'll soon find out. So here we are, it's opened up one of the tables. And if I have a look at the structure, I can see if I change that to object type, that we have four tables, five queries, a large number of forms and reports, and two macros. So all that work has already been carried out for me. What I also see is that I've chosen to store it in a non-trusted location. So I need to enable this content or add the location that I created the database in to my trusted locations, which we've seen previously. So this is using a wizard. If I just close this file, which creates me a set of database objects, which I can then go ahead and start to use. And it's actually, created some custom options here, sales pipeline navigation, which then breaks the database down into a structure of opportunities, employees, customers, and supporting objects. So you can see that not only do you get fully blown database, you also get use of some of the other access features that even if you're not going to use this database per se, you can use it as a learning tool to pick up some of the tips that Microsoft is suggesting you use, for example, here in the navigation pane, and even in the structure of some of the tables.
So I might want to look at the customers table and have a look at the design of it to see what Microsoft has done and see if I can pick up some uses from within there for the correct data type and names of the fields, etc. Now we're not on a bound to keep this database or any of the database or even all of it. I could perhaps delete some of the objects I don't need and go ahead and use those that I do. You're very unlikely to find a database that exactly matches your needs in that wizard. So it's file new, choose one of the options or do a search, find a database that looks like it matches your needs, then create a database from that database template and then go ahead and start to customize. So that's using one of the database wizards.